Glory to God. Before I read my text and you are seated after I pray, why don't you turn around and shake hands with a couple of people next to you and say these words. If you're not a worshiper, would you please move? for letting me come thank you brothers Shira and Shira I asked brother Shira senior and junior if they had done something in the Ohio district that I was not aware of for all the speakers are not here <laughs> two have canceled and the rest are coming in late I said are they aware of something I'm not aware of <laughs> but uh, I do count it a great honor and privilege to be with you and uh, if you'd like to synchronize, it's 20 minutes to 8. And uh, with that, I'd like to, to direct your attention to a couple of portions of Scripture. Genesis chapter 15. Exodus chapter 3. Job 23. Oh, Psalms 40 and 1. Psalm 66, 1 and 2. It all preaches good. And uh, David, when they went to put Saul's armor on, he said, I cannot go with this because I have not proved it. And I've been honored and privileged by the Pentecostal movement and the good Lord himself to uh, get to travel and preach and go on a lot of platforms. I never do make it a habit or a practice to ever go into a major conference like this and deal with something that... Uh, I've, I've not somewhere taught it, preached it, did something, and I feel a witness of it. But on the plane today, <laughs> I felt like the Lord just kind of, <clears throat> and I've scribbled as fast as I can. So if I'm a little jerky while I deliver, it's only because I'm just kind of feeling my way through a revelation. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to preach good. It may not come out good, but I'm going to do my best. You got uh, Genesis 15? Say, we got, it. we got it. I'm reading, please, beginning with verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord. I just saw a brother, uh, Showalter. He's right back here. They've been asking about you, Monty. They want you to pay back those PIMs. Hallelujah. <laughs> financing you all these years. You ain't been in Guatemala. You've been Hawaii fishing. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. 15 and 7. He said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. He said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said unto him, take me a heifer of three years. Now you need, to, you need to circle that word me because that makes everything make sense. He did not say take you. The Lord needed the sacrifice. Abraham didn't need it. Right. Abraham's blood would be shed in circumcision. God's substitute of sacrifice needed a heifer. He said, take me a heaven. See, I ain't got no blood. I'm spirit. I need something to show. And he took unto him all these, not to himself, to him, the Lord and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the another but the birds divided he not and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses Abram drove them away and when the sun was going down a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo 
and horror of great darkness fell upon him and he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them they shall afflict them four hundred years and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward you need to circle that word afterward shall they come out with a great substance thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation shall they come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full I want to read just two other portions of scripture if it doesn't belabor it too much Exodus 3 and uh, just verse 7 and 8 and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them. You need to circle that word out. Of that land unto a good land, and a large, and unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, Amorite, Perizzite, Hivites, and Jebusite. One last scripture, Job 23. Won't you let me just read it, save time trying to find it. 23 and 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. Backward, and I cannot perceive him. Now you understand, Job wasn't a theologian. He was just a guy with a lot of problems. And sometimes when you have a lot of problems, your theology gets messed up. He started off telling you he wasn't a theologian because he said, Behold, I go forward, and he is not there. Child, there ain't no place he ain't. You ain't going to get into enough hell that heaven ain't waiting on you. And yet I know every one of us at times would say, I'm groping and I can't find him. Don't worry, he ain't lost. Behold, I go forward, and he is not there, and backward I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. But when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I think I have a word of encouragement. It may not be a convention message, but I have a word of encouragement for somebody here tonight somebody specifically exactly that the Lord wants me to tell you something so I'm going to try for a few minutes and my subject is I will not die in my dilemma Lord bless the preaching help me to do a great job and help me not to be long winded and say something worth listening to save and heal and deliver and set free encourage and strengthen your people Bless people here tonight who possibly are away from the fold, who are not up to par, that you would just grace their lives with faith and understanding. Do a great work here in the next few moments in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. May God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I will not die in my dilemma. I need a scripture from you, Rev. Genesis 1. Just go over there, you. Reverend Charles, Genesis 1, verse 6. I'll be there in a minute. I shouldn't have to tell apostolic Pentecostal people what I'm going to try to tell you tonight, but the Lord's smarter than me, so he apparently knows there's a need. Peter talks about the trial of your faith being more precious than that of gold, though it be tried by fire. A faith that cannot be tried should never be trusted. I'm going to wait on you. I've flown a lot longer than you have. I'm more tired than you are. If your faith cannot be tested and tried, get rid of it. It ain't worth having. If your faith just makes you a church person, get rid of it. If your faith doesn't work when hell's hot and heaven's quiet, you need a biblical faith. I'm going to find you. See, your faith got to be tried. 
Hello. You got to be tested. You see, God put up with one insurrection many, many centuries ago in heaven when Lucifer insurrected and started that mess up there and God kicked him out so fast that when Jesus spoke about it, he said, uh, it was so fast, it was like lightning. God won't let nothing stay close to him that won't praise him. That's why I get a little concerned with all us little Pentecostals. We looking good, got our hair just right, and smelling good, and acting just so educated and so classy. And God's moving up and down the pew. You're sitting on trying to find somebody that'll worship Him. And the Bible said, God seeking such to worship Him. God's on the on the prowl today. He's looking for somebody that'll say, I may not have it all right, but I know that you're all right and you can get me all right, so I'm going to bless you. Oh, if I was a preacher, could I preach a powerful message on the potentates on the prowl? That's why I told you a few minutes ago, you ask somebody next to you, if they're not going to worship, ask them to move. Because God ain't looking for prima donnas and God ain't looking for pretty folks and God ain't looking for folks who's got it all together. There ain't nobody that's got it all together. We all got a mess in our lives. We all got areas in our lives that are not up to par. But we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are indebted to mercy. We are indebted to the long suffering of God. You got the Holy Ghost, you ought to worship God. God hasn't dealt with any one of us according to our sins or rewarded us according to our iniquities. But as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. Watch, not those that have it together, but those that fear him. What does that mean in English? I think I'll take my liberty. Here's what it means. Those that fear the Lord are honest enough to say, I revere you and I hold you in awe. And I'm honest enough to tell you, everything ain't right in my life, but there's a desire in my life to have everything right. The Lord didn't say you had to be righteous. The Lord said if you're hungry and thirst to be righteous. You're not disqualified because you got a bunch of junk in your life. Well, I don't mess with your theology. I didn't mean to wake everybody up at once. The trial, let me, let me explain to you what the trial of your faith is. I'll save you four years in Bible school. You won't have to go. The trial of your faith is the ability to grasp God's purpose and plan without getting frustrated with his methods. I'm talking some stuff right now. You see, you got to grab God's purpose and marry yourself to it because sometimes it won't make sense if you check his methods. God says, I'm going to bless you and then he lets life knock your brains out. God says, I'm going to use you. And then all of a sudden, you're sitting on the bench somewhere. God promises you, I'm going to make you to become. And you don't become nothing but a disaster. If you don't understand the purpose of God is greater than the process of God, the process of God will drive you crazy. I'll feel the Holy Ghost. You can be seated. You've got to be able to fellowship the silence of heaven. What you going to do with your little pansy Pentecostal faith when God shuts his mouth and just watches? And you squall and bawl and cry and carry on and fast and pray. And you go to all these seminars, you buy all these tapes, and you run with these wackos, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. You can make God obey you. I'd like to go on record tonight. Nobody can make God obey him. God is God all by himself. If he doesn't want to do it, 
I don't care how many scriptures you think you have. You can't make God do something He does not want to do. Don't get frustrated because you got all the scriptures right. We look through a glass darkly. Oh, I know we never use that scripture to apply to ourselves. We always talk about Paul. Someday we're going to see clear. To, let me tell you something. I'm looking through a glass right now. I've been in this thing almost 25 years. Guess what? I'm learning stuff every day. You mean I'm the only bimbo in the house that's ever read the scripture and all of a sudden the scripture goes, <clears throat> and you go, my God, I never saw that. I didn't know that belief. Have I been wrong all this time? God just smiles at you and said, no, I just tolerated you. That's the truth. You study stuff, you believe stuff, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost goes, <laughs> and your eyes pop out, your heart gets on fire, and you feel like fire, and your soul, you say, my God, I never saw that before. It's like God says, well, so what? <laughs> what are you, the judge of everything? <laughs> You're not here. <laughs> You're not here. See, we can get captured by our own so-called knowledge. I'd like to warn the Pentecostal people, and I am Pentecostal, unless God forsakes me, I'll die this way. But I, I need to warn you. Don't get married to what you think is all there is. We are on a progressive journey to conformity to the image of Jesus Christ. We were dead in our trespasses. We were lost in our error. We were walking in darkness. God called us out of darkness into light. Listen to me. Acts 2.38 isn't all the light there is. God is light. We need to keep walking towards the light. If you keep moving towards God, you won't forsake truth. You'll get a greater understanding of truth. You'll get a greater appreciation of truth. But you won't forsake the foundation that brought you into the kingdom. Well, I don't, I'm not trying to cause you no trouble, Bishop. I'm, I'm just trying to talk. This is plain jargon. Not P-L-A-I-N, P-L-A-N-E. Delta. <laughs> Am I the only man in the house that's ever been frustrated by God's ways? He said in Isaiah 55, my ways are not like yours. Now, of course, we don't believe that. We're going to make God do like we want him to. We're going to try to figure it out. God says, you can't figure me out. That's why when he talked to Moses at the bush, and he said, who should I tell? Tell him, who, who sent me? God, God said, uh, Wait a minute, Mo. Let, let me help you a minute. Uh, uh, I'm Alpha, Omega, beginning, the end. I'm first, last, I'm light, I'm truth, I'm right. Uh, listen, you ain't got enough freight trains to carry my description in. Just tell them I am. God is so mind-boggling and so big and so great. You can't categorize him. You can't catalog him. You just got to walk up and look at your situation and say, I am that I am. Anything I need for the be for you, I am that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just I'm having a little fun here. Now God tells Abraham, and now his name wasn't Abraham then, but I'm just going to refer to him as that. His name was Abram. He came out of the earth of Chaldees. Isn't it funny that God made of this man? the greatest nation in the world, and out of his loins would come the seed Christ. And the only reason he chose Abram was because he was a heathen idolater who was into worship. Isn't it funny that he gave the greatest revelation of Messiah to a lady who was shacking up with a man in John 4 at the Samaritan well? Because she was a worshiper. You want to know why you don't hear nothing from God? It's because you got your hands folded and your lips sealed and you won't get loose and get rid of your pride. <laughs> Jesus said to the woman, you worship, you just don't know what you're worshiping. You are a worshiper and even if you're in error, I can deal with a worshiper, but God will not deal with people who will not worship.
please bear with me just a minute. So God tells this ex-idol worshiper that he's caught out of the Earl of Chaldees to become a possessor of Canaan. And he tells him in these scriptures that I read to you that he said, I am going to cause greatness to come out of you. But my method is going to frustrate you, so I'll have to tell you ahead of time. Greatness will come out of adversity. Prosperity will come out of affliction. And strength will come out of suffering and sorrow. Take it or leave it. We got to get out of this Pentecostal apostolic bless me club and let God put us in the furnace and the fire and the trouble and the trial and let him take out of us that we don't need and let him put in us what we do need and let his name be exalted and let nobody remember who we are. Just, just bear with me. I, I believe I'm telling you right. He said, I'm going to let your people be taken into Egypt and there... They're not only going to sojourn there, they're going to suffer there. Not only are they going to suffer there, but I'll cause them to grow there. They'll multiply, and I'll tell you what, when they come out, they won't come out empty. Two things you need to understand. God said, they will come out. Oh, I wish I had time. I'd like to preach about, you are going to come out. I don't care how hellacious and horrible and terrible your present situation is. There's a God on the throne that's telling you, when I get ready to bring you out, I can bring you out so fast, I'll make your head spin. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Everything with God is God bringing us out. To, to turn to someone, just turn to someone next to you and say, now pardon me if I start acting up, but it's because I believe I'm coming out. The devil's a liar. He's a father of liars. There's no truth in him. He can't tell the truth. He's got to borrow the truth to try and quote it. He's trying to tell somebody in this house it ain't going to get no better and it ain't going to change. I'm telling you, the devil's a liar. God said he can bring you out. He can bring your church out. He can bring your ministry out. He can bring your kids out. He can bring your marriage out. Before you see it, say it with me. I'm, I'm coming, out. coming out. Give me some room. Now see, you didn't hear me. See, you, you laughed at me. You didn't hear me. Because God said, oh, when I bring you out, you ain't coming out empty-handed. You're coming out full. You're, you're coming out in better shape than when you went in. You're coming out blessed. You're, oh, you're coming out with stuff that you didn't think you could get. But God's going to give you some stuff. And when you come out, you will not come out empty. I got a word for somebody, I believe. Somebody's church. Somebody's ministry. Don't you let the devil tell you you're as big as you're going to be. God said you're coming out of that mentality. And you're coming out into a higher level. You're going to preach better. You're going to pray better. You're going to sing better. You're going to be a better worshiper. You've got to believe that this is a destiny meeting. You're going to come out. God have mercy. I'm about ready to have a fit. You can be seated. Just bear with me just a minute. <laughs> Huh. He says, I'm going to put your people in an iron furnace and I'm going to let problems produce something in them that prosperity couldn't. I'm going to tell you something, folks. A lot of these, and I, and I use the word just like I want to use it. 
these bimbos, these dirtbags, these dishonest charlatans preaching TV radio tapes, this bless me club, this name it and claim it, this the checks in the mail stuff, they're making God their slave. He is not anybody's bus boy. We don't get saved so he can take care of us. We get saved so we can bless him and serve him. And if we bless him and serve him, there is a reciprocal flow of the tide. We got to get our motives right. What are we in this for? Will you serve him if he doesn't heal you? Will you bless him if he doesn't fix it? Will you worship him if he doesn't take care of it? No wonder the Lord said, Will you son of man find faith on the earth when he comes? He'll find churches and steeples and stained glass windows and membership. And, and, but will he find faith? Faith, what does that mean? I believe God even when he doesn't show up. I trust God even when he doesn't fix my marriage. I'm praying for my kids and they haven't come back. That don't matter. I know God's able. I leave the results with him. See, we, we're trying to play God. We're trying to, we're trying to make results happen. Listen, the results are the Lord of the harvest. All you can do is sow seed, you can water, you can plant, you can cultivate, you can maintain, but God gives the increase. And if anybody else gives the increase, he's a faker. Don't get frustrated because your numbers aren't growing. Oh. I'm going to get down here in the cheap seats a second. Listen to me. If I ever felt a word from the Lord, about two weeks ago I got one. In Galatians 3, he just kind of stabbed me alert and said, let me tell you something, Jeffrey. My people are suffering under a misconception that in order for them to grow and be blessed, they've got to compromise and prostitute truth and give away stuff. They don't understand that the answer is in the book. Listen to what he said. <clears throat> the children of the unmarried wife are more than the married wife. Oh, wait a minute, just let it sit a second. <laughs> and they of the flesh are many more than they that are born of the Spirit. What is he saying? The illegitimate children of Hagar are much more than the promised seed of Isaac. You, you're not hearing me. I'll come closer. Do you know why Sarah gave Hagar to Abe to have a bambino? Because she had looked over in Egypt and noticed Egyptians could reproduce easy. And Hagar was an Egyptian. And when the promised seed got next to the false seed, they produced results. <laughs> but it was another 13 years till Sarah had the promised seed. Listen to me carefully. And during the 13 years, the false illegitimate child made fun of the other child when he was born. I have a feeling that we're being frustrated by a lot of, quote, TV, radio ministries who are growing by thousands and we're holding on to something and we're being tempted to give it away so we can, listen, the Bible said there's coming a day when God will say, cast out the bondwoman and her seed. You hold on to righteousness. You hold on to purity and morals and modesty. You hold on to commitment to the things of God. And when God gets ready, He'll exalt the real seed. Are you hearing me? Egyptians can produce quick and easy. But forget the promise seed sometimes seems like a problem. 
But the Lord turned around and said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll bless, watch, I'll bless the boy because he's your seed. But my covenant's not with him. You're, you're not here. We're getting frustrated at watching people who run 1,500, 2,000, 10,000, 1,600. And they're being blessed and wheelchairs are emptied and they're being blessed and they have success and they have prosperity. God said he would bless them. But he said, my covenant is not with them. And in order for you to inherit, you've got to be in covenant. And in order to be in covenant, you've got to have the name of the one that you're going to inherit from. Am I, am I making sense yet? Please be seated. I'm, I'm trying to get here to this little Delta Airlines thing here. Lord told Abram that greatness would be born out of trouble and affliction and adversity. That life would come out of death and health would come from sickness. And victory would come from defeat and strength would come from struggle. And triumph would come from trial. And thus he gave the original interpretation to Paul's writing of Romans 8.28. For we know. Now, that's what our problem is. We don't know. <laughs> we quote it, but we don't know. Paul wrote and said, now we know that all things. Now, now we said, we hope. We're trying to hold on. We're trying to believe the best we can. We're trying to live through this tragedy and this mess. But if out of this little message tonight, if, if some person could walk out of here and say, for the first time in my life, I know. Listen, Brother Showalter, you don't have to understand to know. That's where we get frustrated. You just know. Don't be held hostage by your understanding. There's lots of stuff I don't understand, but I know it's right. I know it's good. I know it's true. I know it's holy. I don't understand that. There is a place in God, one writer said, past understanding. Well, I can't figure it out. Don't worry, your father can. He says, Weed, I'm sorry it takes so long. Choir, you did such a wonderful job. I think I'll preach over here for a second. We know that all things work together for the good of them who are the called. Not the blessed, the called. According to the, here's the key, the purpose. Purpose is everything. If you don't grasp purpose, problems will drive you crazy. If you don't grasp purpose, trouble will drive you nuts. If you don't marry yourself to understanding, grasping, and knowing the purpose of God, the method of God will make you commit spiritual suicide. You will abandon what is right unless you know I, I know. I, I can't explain it. I can't figure it out. I can't give you a scripture and verse. I just, I just know. And I'm on, I'm on way out here in Ohio right now in kind of dangerous territory right now anyway. I'm just an alien visiting on your soil. We got another problem. We've raised a generation that always has to proof text everything. Well, I want scripture and verse. You ain't got none for air conditioning. How come it doesn't make you mad? You ain't got no scripture for hymn books. You ain't got none for a microphone, electric lights, bus ministry. You ain't got no scripture. See, we don't know the difference between scripture, unscriptural, and non-scriptural. You want to stay away from stuff that's unscriptural. But ain't nothing wrong with stuff that's non-scriptural. You ain't got no scripture you can meet on Wednesday and Sunday. You ain't got no scripture for choir and praise team. Boy, it's getting quiet. (laughs) 
See, you can get locked into saying, well, you just got to prove everything by Scripture. Listen to me. That's how those jerks almost got drowned in the Adrian Sea when Saul, the Apostle Paul, got on ship and said, I perceive. I got a Holy Ghost hunch. I sense something in my spirit that says, we better not get our ignorant carcasses on this boat. We're going to run slap into a storm. And I could see some of the apostolic saying, Scripture in verse, please. <laughs> May I tell you something, Brother Thought? So nice to see you and your boy and all your crew. But I'm going to tell you something. We need to be men of God with integrity. And the people that we try to pastor, they need to sometimes feel that sometimes a preacher doesn't have a scripture verse, but he senses in his spirit. He, feel, uh, he feels something down in his Holy Ghost knower. And he has to tell you, this is why we're not going to do this. This is why we're going to dress this way. This is why we're not going to go there. It's not scripture verse. It's a witness of the Holy Ghost that says, get away from this. said I perceive that this journey will be to much hurt but they believed the owner of the ship because they were into money and merchandise sometimes I pass through church and sometimes I, I can't come up with scripture I just kind of feel that I feel that I feel because I know that I know that I know I, I just know somebody goes to counsel with you and suddenly your spirit goes <laughs> you go foul ball Just precisely, I know you. Maybe you don't practice this up here in the promised land, but down in the swamps, we do. <laughs> I just sometimes sense things. Young people of the 90s say, man, I'm picking up some vibes. <laughs> man, I get some cool vibes from that chick. Get some vibes. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're into the hippie cultures, whew, man, what a rush. Well, sometimes I'll walk by somebody. I ain't got my mind on it. I'm not trying to take care of all their romance and their finance or any other other ants. And the Holy Ghost goes, said something wrong here. I, I'm going to waste my time trying to find scripture and verse. I'm just going to say, you know, the Holy Ghost tells me we got a little problem here. We need to deal with this right now. Now, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. That does not give God's preachers a right to be belligerent and unkind and lords over God's heritage. It calls us to be sensitive and compassionate and full of pity and love and concern and understanding. But if you're in a church where you've got a spiritual father, you better thank God you've got somebody that can hear a word from the Lord, that can sense a quickening in the Holy Ghost that can give you a direction when they don't even fully understand it themselves. Can I have a few more minutes? Folks, I'm the only preacher. <laughs> we know that all things work together. They don't feel good. They don't look good. They don't taste good. They don't even seem like they're working for good. But we know. Purpose is everything. If you don't understand purpose, you will be nothing but a pain in the neck. Drive your pastor until he wants to drink Jack Daniels. Kind of counsel him so much. And by the way, where do we get into all this counseling stuff? I thought Jesus is called the counselor. Everybody else is an imposter. I'm not saying you can't talk, but dear God, the old people, the old timers, if you don't mind me referring to you, Elder Kinsey, the old Pentecostal parade. They didn't counsel all day long. You told them all your crazy mess, and they said, come on, let's get to the altar. We'll pray this through. Oh, I lost half the church just now. Honey, you can pray a lot of things through. You want somebody else to do the battle. You want somebody else to do the spiritual warfare. But you need to get on your knees and pray through. You got the Holy Ghost. 
you can hear the voice of God. Yeah, please be seated. I'm sorry. Huh? I know I'm a little different than you cats. I know that. I'm just a rude slob doing my job. I know that. Don't bother me. I got a pocket full of money. Got a great church. You ain't gonna hold me hostage. Let me tell you the worst altar. The worst altar you could ever kneel at is the altar of somebody else's opinion. Some of you cats don't even lift your hands and talk in tongues and boogaloo because you're sitting next to some nitka poop that might have a bad opinion about it. Honey, if I was going through as much hell as some of you are going through, I'd shout myself out of my wig. I'd knock somebody upside their head. I'd talk in tongues like a Chinese laundry. I wouldn't hold myself hostage at somebody else's opinion. They're not going to pay your bills. They're not going to fight your devils. They're not going to fast your meals. They're not going to cry your tears. Now just, just bear with me here a second. What I was going to say before I interrupted myself was Jesus said something very strange that we holy roller people have not really taken to heart and practiced to the degree that we should. He said in John chapter 10, My sheep know my voice. So much for the elitism of the preacherhood. You get the Holy Ghost, you talk in tongues, you're water baptized in Jesus' name, you're trying to live godly and righteous. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Because he said, my sheep know my voice. Please hear me. He didn't say my lambs. Because immature, ungrown, unfacilitated believers they only know his word is the difference between knowing the book and knowing the author we better watch out folks we've raised a generation that can quote scripture and name scripture and use scripture but they don't know the voice of the shepherd You've got to learn the voice of the shepherd. And here's how you can tell. His voice will never violate what he's written in his word. Don't believe any revelation that takes you away from one God. Jesus name baptism. Holy Ghost talking in tongues. Holiness and righteousness and morality and modesty. Don't believe that. That's not the voice of the shepherd. I'm just talking. For a sermon, I'm just talking. <laughs> Let me try it again. Purpose, come on, say it over here, girls. Look at me. Purpose is everything. If you don't understand purpose, your faith will be frustrated easily. Because God will make a way for your carcass to get thrown in the pit. Right, Joe? And if you don't understand purpose, Joe, you're going to live ticked off, aggravated, mad at God, retaliatory, resentful, end up bitter. But if you understand purpose, you can go through 20 years of hell and chaos and problems, and God will let you make a great speech one day to your brothers and say, you meant it for evil. good and when you understand purpose you can deal with the pain you can deal with the rejection you can deal with the hurt when you understand all things work together for the good 
Can I have a few more minutes? See, if you understand purpose, then you can say with Job, uh, I can't find him. I've been looking for him. I got a search warrant out for him. I got the posse out, got the hunting dogs out. I can't locate him. But he says, this thing I know, I'm coming out of this. You know, I'm not going to die in my disaster. I'm not going to die in my dilemma. This situation isn't big enough to separate me from God. This hurt, this pain, and this problem doesn't have the power to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Please be seated. Paul says to the church and says, so you're not discouraged. He writes to the church of Philippi and he says, the things that happened unto me, brethren, sisterin, they were for the furtherance of the gospel so that I've been able to bring the word of God in the palace and the prison. Oh, I've, I got a spirit of revelation right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Have you, has anybody ever figured out who the guy was in Paul's dream? Paul said, I had a dream the other night. I had a vision. I saw a man of Macedonia beckoning to me saying, come over and help us. Come on, all you scholars, see if I'm right. When he goes to Macedonia, all he finds is a bunch of ladies washing clothes. Watch. He didn't find the man until he got thrown in the Philippi jail. That was the man. And God, oh, I'm, oh, and God wanted to save him. He was a low life, probably a cursor, maybe immoral, very vicious, very rude, very hurtful. And yet something in his heart says, I don't want to be like I am. I need some help and maybe he just whimpered a prayer somewhere even in front of a pagan idol and say if you're really there somewhere would you help me would you tell me and God took that wafting prayer filtered it through his kindness and compassion and gave it to Apostle Paul in a vision and a dream now God wants to save him but being a good apostolic Pentecostal we won't deal with whores and prostitutes and queers and fags and drunks and liars we'll go to the nice people the lawyers and the doctors and the people that have a good job but God says, I got somebody inside a jail. I need you to get to him. If you won't witness it to him, I'll put you in the jail. I'll cause you to be mistreated so that I can reach one soul that is trying to find glory. And Paul and Silas get their brains beat out and dragged through the street and dealt with like common criminals thrown into a jail and then an inner prison and then shackled to a wall because God wants one guy saved and so Paul you be seated so Paul understanding purpose and not being circumvented by problems and pain starts singing Ain't God good to his children? He's so good, I have to say. He's the best thing that ever came my way. And he's, sh he's shaking those chains like Pentecostals shake a tambourine. And he's shaking his ankles like we Pentecostals beat on a drum. And he got God's attention. Oh yes, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the earth is God's footstool. God started keeping beat with Paul and Silas. And when God starts shaking his foot, the whole building starts shaking. The Bible said at midnight, and they got the blessing and praising God, not for problems and pain, not for pressure and hurt, but for understanding and grasping and knowing purpose. God showed up and wrecked the jail and saved the jailer. I, 
I, I got more to say. I got more to say if you got a few minutes to stay. God may allow some of us to go through a bunch of chaos and crud so that he can reach somebody else so he can empty us out so we can understand that God said my strength is made perfect in stop cursing the darkness stop cursing the weakness stop trying to escape from your struggle all things are of God God rules and reigns in the kingdoms of everybody we're developing an apostolic Pentecostal Christianity of escapology we need to get off that When you join yourself to the Lord and you become his little piece of meat, his little potato, his little dish rag, he can twist you and wring you out and throw you anywhere you want because he don't think you'll fuss and cuss because once you surrendered to him, you gave up your rights. Our problem is we keep holding on to our rights. I had one of the ladies in our church the other day, pardon the reference here, Husband got picked up for breaking parole. We've had him out of jail for four years, raised the family, doing great. He did something ignorant, stupid, broke his probation, got thrown in jail. She's squalling a ball, sucking her thumb. She's sucking her thumb and I'm paying her bills. I feel like saying, get your thumb out. Let me suck my thumb a while. No, wait a minute. Get what I'm trying to tell you. She made a statement to me that almost made me come through the phone. She said, Brother Arnold, I just can't get it. Watch. This kind of stuff don't happen to us kind of people. I said, what school have you been going to? You didn't get a Pentecostal polio shot. You're not immunized from problems and situations. In fact, when we go through stuff and we hold our head up high and we magnify God, God gets a lot of praise. God gets a lot of honor. But when we act like the world, we bring reproach to the kingdom. I just need a few more minutes and I'll, I ain't going to be done, but I'll be back tomorrow, the Lord willing. Just, just listen to this. Philippians 1 and 6, Paul says, and this is the confidence that we have. This is the confidence that we have. What's the confidence? That he that has begun a good work in us ain't going to quit till he's finished. Uh, I was recently seeking the face of the Lord and asking him to use me for his glory and to help me be a witness and make me more naked and transparent and empty the bunch of trash out of my life and let every area of my life be under the government of God. And you know what happened? Good. <laughs> People quit my church. About $8,000 a month worth of tithes walked out the door. They put the roof on my building this past week and they put it on backwards. It has to be all taken off. Went to pour the concrete. They were seven feet short. Has to do it all over again. And I'm walking around there like you. I think I'd just soon be saved. See, we want to be saved and safe. And I'm just walking and I'm just... I, I wish I could tell you that I was talking to Elijah and John the Baptist and <laughs> Abraham. And I just, I just walking in the mud and dragging my my tail between my legs and just and I'm almost like that stupid lady these things shouldn't happen to people like me I tithe I fast I pray my God I give the missions they keep me bankrupt all the time every time they send they got a new thing call Arnie that jerk will give you another grand just my God man I feel like I'm on a gypsy tour everybody comes by and got to give sheets for Christ Christmas for Christ Spirit of Freedom, Mother's Memorial. I, I kind of want to get one shekels for Arnold. <laughs> My God. And so I started telling the Lord, just like Hezekiah did. said, now wait a minute, I fast and I pray and I study and I preach and I'm honest. And when I have a bad attitude, I say something stupid or wrong, I confess and I repent. You know, what gives? 
oh, I wish I had time. Don't let the devil put you on a guilt trip because you ever ask God a question. God doesn't fall off his throne because you ask him questions. God is not offended because you ask God questions. God can deal with honesty. It's dishonesty and pretense that aggravates God. I was taught when I was a youngster, you don't ask God, you don't question God. That is an incorrect philosophy. That is not biblical theology. I can show you dozens of scriptures where God's greatest people said, where are you? How come? Why? God will give an answer to somebody who asks, but he won't mess with anybody who pretends. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pass to your church here. <laughs> so I'm walking around sucking my thumb, crying in my root beer. I've been four years this June trying to build this ignorant building. Four years. Could have graduated from college, had an honest job. Four years. Everybody, every one of my friends that I call, they buy property, hire an engineer, hire a crew, build the church, have a service, people get in the Holy Ghost. I'm still walking in the mud. <laughs> Roofs on crooked. Concrete seven foot short. So, what, 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 what kids here? <laughs> Just a little visitation right there would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> And, and, and if I'm lying, I'm dying. The Spirit of God went <laughs> in the mud, in between my grumbling and griping. <laughs> and these words came to me. You said you wanted to be like me. You said you wanted me to use you. Well, see, what I forgot to tell him was I meant like walking on the water, <laughs> healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. I didn't mean getting my brains beat out and, and being hurt and, and being looked at and second guessed and made fun of and ridiculed and I'm not into beating. I don't want to be beat now. I, I just want I want you to use me and let me look good at the same time. Brother Show Walters like God said, Well Bubba, only one of our images is going to be on a stage, either going to be yours or mine. If you want me to use you, then you've got to let me choose the method. And you marry yourself to the purpose. And don't let the method drive you crazy. Because I promise you, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never put on you more than you're able to bear. With every test and every trial, I'll make a way of escape. Hold on. Come on. Can I have about five more minutes? I'm not near done. <laughs> he that has begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We just don't understand what work he started. See, we think it's hickama hookama hooky. <laughs> Goosebumps for Jesus. I think I'll just go here for a minute and I'll quit, okay? I, I wrote this on the plane right here. Wrote it on the plane. Here's what I wrote it. Our knowledge of God can be the most frustrating thing you ever have to deal with. That's what I thought I'd get. <laughs> Listen to me. It's what you know about God that'll frustrate you you know he's able but he doesn't you know he can but he chooses not to you know that he's got so much power that he can speak to a tumor and it just be gone so fast like you ain't never had it and he keeps his mouth shut you know right now that all the hell and the financial pressure you're going through God could in a moment 
just bring finance to you and bless you and bring you out of your mess and he does it listen to me it's what we know about God that can frustrate us if I didn't know God was able I wouldn't be so frustrated if I didn't know God knows my zip code and the hell I'm going through and where I am and my nerves are frazzled and I'm at the breaking point if I didn't know that he knows I could just move on but because I know that he knows that's what Job says he knows where I am I know he can just cause revival to break out in our little church in Gainesville and for some reason it breaks out everywhere else and I'll tell you right on video, whatever we're on, I'm not excited and thrilled. I'm, I'm not built up when I hear all the stuff God's doing everywhere else. Now you are. You enjoy the reports. I don't. <laughs> well, you just had 200 get the Holy Ghost. That's great. I had 16 quid. <laughs> well, we built our church in nine months. Well, I'm still out in the mud. I'm four years. And God just kind of shockwaves you back to reality and says, Come on, boy. Purpose. Purpose. Grab hold of the purpose. And the pain's nothing. Grab hold of the purpose. And you can go through the pressure. Grab, grab hold of the purpose. Know that all things work together for the good. Know it. Know it. In your spirit. Know it. And it doesn't matter what happens and who leaves and who doesn't leave and who supports and who doesn't support. If you marry yourself to the purpose, you can go through the process. Yeah. Am I making sense? <sighs> because I know he's greater than anything. And he chooses not to fix it. If I don't marry myself to the purpose, I can be so because I know that he's all wise and all knowing and all powerful and he fills all time and space and I cry but then why are you allowing this if you can do it if you can fix my marriage if you can save my kids if you can get them off drugs if you can help them with their morals why aren't you doing it God keeps saying, purpose, purpose, marry yourself to the purpose, for all things work together for the good. This thing is not all things. Jacob cries out in Genesis and said, all these things are against me. True, Jacob, but all these things are not all things. The boy you think that is dead? is sitting on the throne in Egypt and got the keys to the corn crib. <laughs> See, there's some stuff we don't know that if we knew, we think would make us happy. Oh, it may make you happy for a moment, but it wouldn't bless and encourage and strengthen your faith. And we deal with God by faith. We trust Him when we can't trace Him. We believe Him when we can't feel Him. We worship Him and love Him when He doesn't do what we know He's able to do. Oh, I got two amens and three waved hands and the rest of you just stared. Am I the only person in this house that has ever said, well, if I was God, I'd empty out the hospitals and I'd take care of the cancer wards and I'd heal everybody, but I ain't God and God's smarter than me and He's got a reason why He allows some things. Shall the thing formed must and cuss with him that formed it? Shall I dare have the audacity to try and drag God to the witness stand? Say, give an account of your doings. I've only seen one man ever do that. He has 300 questions in 38 chapters of the book of Job. And when he dragged God to the witness stand and God showed up out of the whirlwind, God said, uh, 
heard you want to talk to me. <laughs> Understand you think I'm unfair because I let your ten kids die and I killed your donkeys and your oxen and your sheep and I got rid of your CDs and you lost your condo in the Bahamas. And you've had boils everywhere, and you've had a bunch of nincompoop friends, and now I've listened to you for 38 chapters. You're filling the wind with nothing but emptiness, and you've called me to the witness stand. Well, Job, here I am. What do you want to know? You know what my Bible tells me, Brother Kinsey? When God showed up out of the whirlwind, Job didn't ask one question. You know why? The presence of God is the answer. He don't have to explain nothing. Just get in the presence of God. For in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. And at His right hand, pleasures forevermore. Five minutes. Five minutes. I'm a combination of two guys. I'm taking care of Morgan. He don't get paid. I get paid for Morgan. Yeah. Are you bored? You got to hear me. Brother Tharp, before you and I had the problem, God had the plan. Before Adam and Eve ever did that stupid thing, eating the fruit in the garden, God already had a plan to slay an animal. Oh yes, the Bible said Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. So before the world ever had trouble, God had an answer in the wings waiting. Before all hell breaks loose in your life, you've got to understand that heaven's waiting in the wings. It's got an answer for your dilemma. It's got an answer for your situation. It's got a solution for your mess. You've got to believe that God's got a purpose even when He doesn't explain Himself. Why should God have to explain Himself to a love slave anyway? Just bear with me one minute, I'll try to finish it. Hmm. See, what, what, what I'm trying to get to tonight is, is I haven't got to it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to one statement that David made in about Psalms 119. He said, it was good for me uh -huh. <laughs> that I got the fire knocked out of me. That's Brooklynese interpretation of King English afflicted. It was good for me that I've been afflicted. You want to know when you're growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? When you can look at bad and say, it was good. When you can look at hell and say, heaven's behind this. When you look at pressure and say, God's greater than this pressure. And if he didn't think I could go through this, he wouldn't have let me go into this. I'm going to learn a lesson. God's going to be exalted. Somebody's going to be helped through this situation if I keep a good attitude. Well, let, me, let me just talk and I'll finish, okay? It's been a long night, I know. The gold needs the furnace. Silver needs the refining and the smelter. Right. The diamond requires the pressure on the coal. The perfume requires that the petals be crushed and broken. The bread requires that the corn be crushed and pulverized. The oil needs the olive to be crushed in the olive press. And some of us silly people have had the audacity to say to God, even this week, Anoint me, Lord. But you don't get anointing oil until you break the olive. And you cannot be Holy Ghost anointed and function in the flow of the Spirit and be unbroken. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> oh yes if you want to be used brethren sister you gotta just know that the purpose for being used 
is being bruised. If, if, if you want to be anointed, you got to understand something. I'm trying to close. Anointing from God does not come cheap. Thank you, Brother Kinsey. I got people that I, I get people that tell me they got 200 of my tapes. And they study it. They can preach like me. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Ain't nobody can preach like me. Now wait a minute. I didn't. I don't want that misunderstood. I, I don't want you to. That, that I didn't say nobody can preach better than me or as good as me. Man, there's thousands of guys that can out preach me. I couldn't carry their Bible case. What I'm talking about is you cannot preach with my anointing until you kill my lion. Oh no! You can't preach with my anointing until you've killed my Goliath. You can maybe mimic me, you can try to duplicate me, but you ain't gonna have what I got until you've gone through what I've gone through. You stand, come on, we'll just finish. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we want Samson's strength. But we don't want to fight Samson's lion. <laughs> we want the believer's crown, but we don't want to be brutalized by the believer's cross. And that damnable spirit that's come out of hell in this generation again, trying to get us like Peter did with Jesus, avoid the cross. He said, if I avoid the cross, there's no resurrection. Wow. Let me just close. Last time, close. I just, I'll make me a note. I'll be back tomorrow. Just, sorry I didn't preach good. I had a lot of things I was trying to say. Jesus cried out from the cross. Eli, Eli, Sabachthani. Watch this. Your example, your high priest, your Lord, your Savior, your Redeemer, your King, your God, your elder brother, your sacrificial lamb, even he in his flesh cried out, feeling forsaken. Why? Why? Has thou forsaken me? Do you know that in the life of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's the only time recorded where Jesus ever referred to his Father other than the Father? The only time he ever called him my God. It was always my Father, my Father, my Father. But when you get under enough pressure and enough pain, it is possible that the best of us can feel a forfeited relationship. And so it's not father, son, and daughter. It's judge, Lord, God, King. And feel alienated. The Bible says that the men standing by the cross thought he cried out for Elijah. They said, come, wait, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. You see, flesh always thinks you're crying out for flesh. <clears throat> and there's some things flesh can't save you from. Oh. 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 Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we throw away as people things that are broken and call them useless. God throws things away unbroken and calls them useless. The man got healed because they broke open the roof. 
Mary is in the gospel record because she broke the alabaster jar. Acts 27, Yerachalim has ripped the ship apart. And the scripture says, and they swim to shore and to safety on broken pieces of the vessel. I want to be used, God. Fine. And offer yourself to the, to the purpose of God. And don't fuss and cuss over the process. Have I, have I lost you here? Are you ready, Brother Wilson? Let's, let's play some whoever wants. Play uh, Uncle Joe broke his toe. I don't care what you do. I'm not a good altar go giver. I've never been able to give one in 25 years. I don't know how to scare people. I don't know how to make people just afraid. All I can tell you is tonight, God is trying to tell you that He will use your adversity and your affliction and the pressure to make you into something you've never been. And you are frustrating the purpose and the plan and the grace of God by always trying to escape from it. He never instructed them to escape from Egypt. He said, you go down into Egypt and there I will make thee a great nation. Now who's ever been frustrated by the process, it's time to get a fresh vision of the purpose. God is not going to forsake you in the middle of your failings. Oh, God. I don't even know how to ask you to have an altar call. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to ask you. I, I, I'd like to offer this conference up into the hands of the Master. My Bible says when they gave Him the five loaves and the two fish, fish He blessed, He broke, and he gave. We want the blessed. We want to be given away. We want to circumvent step two. But you see, he's got to break the bread because that way the bread loses its identity. Anybody need to be broken? Anybody need to understand the purpose of God? God's not your enemy. He doesn't hate you. Don't be frustrated because stuff you understand about God and why He's not doing it. God can fix your family. He can fix your finance. He can take care of your marriage. But maybe tonight we could marry ourselves afresh to the purpose of God. I can feel in my mind, I feel this word keeps going over in my mind. Apology. Apology. You know what real repentance is? It's a heartfelt apology for your shenanigans and your antics and your attitude. I kind of feel, maybe just, I'm not alone. We need to offer God a sincere apology for grumbling and griping about the process. You can get jealous over other churches having revival. You can be frustrated. Other people pray for the sick and they get healed. You pray for them and they don't get healed. You can get, uh, I don't know, uh, does anybody want to pray? We ain't got a lot of room up here. Maybe you could pray where you are. Maybe you could just ask the Lord to, to help you get a fresh understanding that all things work together for the good. If you're away from the Lord right now, you ought to thank God for your problems and your pressure because they're bringing you back to the saving knowledge of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, God's power, His might, is made perfect in weakness. You rejoice in your weakness. Because Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because the strength is the Lord's and not mine. The wisdom is the Lord's and not mine. That way the victory and the credit goes to the Lord. And I will pose for a picture. Bye, 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 bye. Could we pray?